In an armed robbery, you can't count on luck, but luck counts. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Mexico. Here we see an armed robbery that goes wrong in the luckiest way for the armed robbers. It's gonna teach us some important lessons about getting out of the danger zone, if at all possible, about the effectiveness of an armed resistance stopping armed robbers, and about stopping the threat, even if that doesn't involve shooting the gun. As this one begins, these guys start the robbery. The guy with the arm sling there is one of the robbers. He's the gun man, and the guy in the blue sweater is the grab man. One dude runs out, and that guy whacks him with his backpack as he goes. Notice the guy in the green shirt's just standing there going, oh, that's kind of weird, man. As the guy with the gun comes back, still has it in his hand there, our guy in green just stays there. I love this other guy in a blue shirt. He bags out. Now some cops show up. They actually came to investigate an earlier robbery, and they interrupt this robbery in progress. And thankfully, the bad guys decide to give up rather than have a shootout with the cops. One more bystander gets out, and these guys are going to take these guys into custody and make like a bad guy body pile here when they're going to then finally, after a little while, put their guns away and get out some handcuffs here in just a second where he puts his gun away inside his vest. That's an interesting place to keep it. They put some cuffs on these guys, and this one's over. Let's go back and learn some lessons on this one. I think it's interesting that we see a gunman and grabman combination here. You can see that this guy in the blue sweatshirt does not have anything in his hands. He has a glove on his left hand, nothing on his right hand, no gun there. And that combination of gunman and grabman, pretty common in armed robberies. We see it all the time with multiple attackers. Next, this guy in this white shirt, he sees an opportunity, and I don't know if he saw that this guy was unarmed, but whatever the case, he decides he's heading for the door and, and escaping the danger zone, running. Your run foo, your Nike defense, is an effective strategy many times. Get out of the danger zone. That guy did, and I think that was a good defense. Now, I don't know about getting in his car, which is what he looked like he did there, but getting out of the danger zone is really wise. Now, I think that the guy saw the cops that were coming here, and the guy in blue decided to get out too, but as these cops showed up, you saw the guy with the gun go out just a little bit and then head back towards the back of the store. I think he saw those cops coming and had a second just to see kind of what was going on. Hey man, and sometimes thankfully they make good choices. Now we got multiple bystanders here and I want to pay attention to the fact that this officer comes up, he gets a gun on these guys, but pay attention to the fact that we have the bystander who ran out and two more that are right in the line of fire or not right in it, but very close. So you got to have those rules of firearm safety, make sure your firearm's always pointed in a safe direction here. Thankfully, these guys give up, but I do want to note that the officer in front here is very close. That if the guy in blue had decided in that moment that he wanted to reach out and fight the first officer for his gun, he was within arm's distance to do that. If you have a fireman in the fight, don't allow him to get that close. Next, the officer behind. I'm pretty sure here, it's kind of hard to see with the angle. You know, you can't be positive with the surveillance video here. But it looks to me like the officer in the rear is pointing his gun directly at the back of his partner. Man, if you've got a partner in a fight, you got to make sure that your muzzle discipline is strong and you don't put a shot in your partner. We're going to see them have all kinds of muzzle problems here in just a second because now as they get a, you know, a pile full of bad guys here and the lead guy is putting people in handcuffs, look at where the muzzle is pointed from his partner. Once again, it appears to me that his muzzle is pointed directly at his partner. You must know where your muzzle is pointed at all times, especially as a good guy. You don't want to have any fratricides. So, and now he's gonna put his gun away here and you're gonna see him put it away in his vest. Something we see in, in Central and South America because they get you know robbed for their guns quite a bit. But if you notice, he's pointing a gun at himself again. So finally, again, if you are the good guy and if you have to, whether you use a firearm for any purpose at all, make sure you practice the rules of firearm safety. Make sure they are ingrained in you through practice and through training so that you don't make mistakes like these. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. Thankfully, the bad guys are in custody. Learn a lot about armed robberies here. Let's use those lessons to cover our ASP.